Uh, the film slash crew review The Spy, spy Who Jumped Me. Oh, The Spy Who Jumped. I thought we were doing Austin Powers. Ew. Oh. Hey, team, Megan Strachan here, and welcome to the Film, film Slice podcast. podcast. I'm here, as always, with my co host, Kane Dooley Willie Kane Dogs. Hello. And Bro Diddly Do, Broadman Richards. And Angly Wangly Lovers. That's this guy. Uh, this week, we are reviewing The Spy Who Dumped Me. Kane Dogs, hit us up with that IMDb summarize. I can do that. Audrey and Morgan are best friends who unwittingly become entangled in an international conspiracy, and one of the women discovers that the boyfriend who dumped her was actually. A spy. Dun, dun, dun. My God. Really, she should have known that because of the title of her movie. Well, yes. Mm. Yes. So she just if you bothered bother to read the script. If she bothered to read the script, she would have known. Uh, lazy, really. Really lazy. Mm. Speaking of lazy, Kane Dogs. Yes. How, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me. But you know Very what? Good. We're recording this at Brody's house and Brody was the last person to show up. <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> this is very true. I'm glad Angus didn't point at me and call me lazy. <laughs> but call, call, call John lazy for some reason. When you see the movie, what do you think? When you see the movie, what do you think? <laughs> do you like the movie? <laughs> no, the <a> shit. <laughs> I saw it yesterday and I thought it was pretty good. Really enjoyed it. Okay, dogs. I saw it Friday night and I also thought it was really... I went in with low expectations and it exceeded yeah. all of them. Yeah, really good. Right. Okay. Uh, I saw the movie also Friday night. Yep. And I thought this movie was shit. Really? I hated really? it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Whoa. I did not this like it at all. This would be interesting. Yeah. I expected... I was like, I don't know whether Brody will like this because it's pretty by the book, but Angus will love it. I <laughs> thought it was rubbish. <laughs> really? Yeah. I thought it was a half-baked piece of shit. But anyway, we'll get wow. into it. I had <laughs> no idea what this film was. You guys told me to go see it. Walked in. I was like, no, it's got Kate McKinnon in it. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it on the posters walking in. <laughs> I... I, I... I, had no- I knew nothing about I it. I think I'd seen a trailer for it. I'm Even- really enjoying watching films without knowing anything about them. Right? It's actually a really good way <laughs> yeah. to watch films. The greatest thing is, is Brody, me or Angus usually are the ones that decide what we're seeing. And as a result, we just tell Brody like the day before he has to see a movie what he's seeing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, really, it's great. I'm really What's sorry. I usually, yeah. I usually make a judgment <laughs> on the name. I was like, oh, that's a bad name. So- Spy dumped me. I was like, I'm not looking forward to this film. <laughs> well, it was like, hey. <laughs> well, I compared this film going in to movies like um, This Means War which is it's like it's one of those like this is a movie for for couples and it's got romance for the girls but action for the guys like The Killers or something with Ashton Kutcher and the problem with those movies is the action the stuff that's for the guys is always really shit Mm. and I thought this film had some really well done action for, for this type of film, I thought it was great. Lads, you know how every uh, week I put up on Instagram and Twitter what film we're reviewing, and I ask our listeners, our slicey slices out there, if they've seen it and what they thought. And no one writes back, because no one sees... one. No one sees any of the films that we see. Guess how many people wrote back this week? None. Two. One. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys suck. This is, this is not pre-planned. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, I'm choosing two every time now. <laughs> And it hasn't been two since. <laughs> All right, so this one comes from Nathan Clinic, 94. He says... He's really persistent, that guy. I haven't seen it, and I have no opinion, other than hashtag Gordo, and then hashtag Free the Pickle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes! Free so the Pickle! So, that's now a reference to a podcast that we did two podcasts ago. Two podcasts ago, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan, for... Giving zero relevant information on this week's movie. Hey, remember, guys. The hashtag free the pickle is always welcome on this podcast, Jordan. And the hashtag free the pickle is always relevant until the pickle is free. free. Am I right? <laughs> you are right. Hey, uh, so we put stuff up on Instagram and Twitter, but now we also... We also have a Facebook page. That- That's right. I made a Facebook page. You can yep. head on over to Facebook. Incorrect. For the first time ever, I've decided to make, my, to make myself nearly indisposable, and I'm running a Facebook page. Uh, we currently have 13 followers. 12. Um, 12. But if you... Uh, That's whoever's... four times the amount of people that work on this podcast. If, yep. And admittedly, I don't think you've liked it. So I have liked it, you dickhead. <laughs> okay. Also, that might have been a bit harsh. I apologize. <laughs> 
Jordan, good work for getting the Facebook page up and running. Thank you. And uh, thanks, Nathan Clinic. That was, yeah, that was good message. <laughs> Look, uh, we're on Facebook now, the Film Slice Podcast. So Film Slice Pod. Come cast. over, give us a like. Um, I'll put up... <laughs> bring some dip. Bring some dip. <laughs> um, head on over the page. You can find all of our, all of our podcasts and more. Let's uh, move on to our next segment. Uh, would you recommend it? And who would you recommend it to? Starting with Broadman. Okay. Um, so I would recommend this to my, a lot of people. I... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Broadman. Um, I would recommend this to a lot of people because I really enjoyed the action. I thought the action was filmed incredibly well. Mm. And yep. it made even kind of like smaller stunts than a lot of other films seem really awesome and yeah. epic. And I really, really liked that. Plus, I really enjoyed the comedy and the relationship between the two main characters. Yep. So I think this film's got something in it for pretty much everyone. If you're old enough to see it, if you're 15, probably even if you're 12, Look, I don't really care we, about we, the ratings very much. We would have seen this <laughs> film when we were 12, yeah, 15. But yeah, if, if you're I 12. Mean, I mean, we don't recommend that. Don't see this with uh, a bunch of mates. You know what? Um, Go see this straight out of the womb. That's what we're going to say. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> out of the womb, in yeah. the cinema. That's what we say here. If you are <laughs> boys. If you're any age, go go see this one. Um, I think it's got something here for everyone. Maybe don't see it with family, just because there's there's some pretty harsh comedy in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just talking about some more personal stuff. But other than that, see it with friends. Uh, Colleagues. Go- yeah. I reckon I could watch this film with dad. I reckon dad would get a good... I love how you think your dad's a colleague. Dad would get a... Dad would get a... <laughs> Colleagues? Oh, yeah. I could watch it with my dad. They've worked with each other to raise Jordan. <laughs> K-Dogs. Well, I agree with Brody. Uh, I saw this with my girlfriend and I thought this is going to be one of those standard films where it's like something for the girlfriend and... Well, they tried for, for the boyfriend. But yeah. no, this film was great. We both loved it. I recommend it to, uh, yeah, any of my friends over the age of 15. I'd recommend this to anyone old enough to watch it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. I agree right. with Brody. Maybe don't watch it with, like, your mum or your grandma. But outside of that, this film's <laughs> great. <laughs> See it with That's exactly else. what Brody said. <laughs> Getting yeah. specific with the grandma. Bit. <laughs> Straight out of the womb, not your grandma. Not your grandma. Well, I'm starting to think that I watched a different movie because everything that you're saying just didn't land for me at all. What happened Maybe to the movie was... you watched, Angus? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was coming off the back of Mission Impossible. The action wasn't really as entertaining for me, I guess. The action in this felt comparable to me to the action that we've had in, like, the last three Daniel Craig films. Like, Hmm. I thought it was great. It's not Mission Impossible quality for the last film, but in terms of action films that we've had this year, not including... MCU films because mm. they're a very stylized version of action but for most other films I think this has topped other yeah. action films we've seen yeah. this year and it, and it was filmed like a good action film yeah. it wasn't it wasn't filmed like let's throw some action into this comedy it was filmed like it was a good action film there's like scenes where they do amazing stunts and it's just a single take going from some crazy place it's like inside a building follow someone outside of a building there's while a, they jump yeah. onto a van down and onto the street and continues it's like mm. wait what it felt you know what this film felt like it felt like a Jason Bourne film, action-wise. No. It felt, felt no Jason way. Bourne for me. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> no. no, Jason Go Bourne... Go back and watch Jason Bourne. It's, it's so like it. quick cut. And yeah. it is just... Like, the first one is a really good film. Yeah. And that was the first time that style was introduced. Mm. But any of the other ones... And even going back to the first one, it's very jarring to watch. Yeah? yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen him in years. I would say this is more of, like, a watered-down Kingsman kind of... Okay, the action. cinematographer... Worked on Twenty Two Jump Street. Oh, that yeah. other that other high threshold action film. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, you're right. Action Kingsman, comedy. This this does feel. I would say it's a watered down Kingsman kind of action. I'd say it's b- comparable to Kingsman action. Like, okay, so so I'm gonna go to the the Killers, which is an Ashton Kutcher and someone else movie, and it's a movie where there's a relationship, but he's a spy or something like that, and the action is real bad. The action in this. Real good. And I think one of the things that helps is this movie is rated MA, I think. Hmm. MA in Australia. Uh, which is... Which is... Ma! <laughs> <laughs> MA. Yeah. Those- ma. <laughs> MA. Ma. It's rated Ma. <laughs> <laughs> the point is... The rains are coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. There's a joke to an ad that came out 15 years ago. <laughs> a childhood ad. Man. <sighs> 
advertising, man. Brainwashing. We're, we're <laughs> cutting all of that. Yeah. Do you, nah. eat, do you eat a lot of corn now? <laughs> um, the, the ad was a corn ad. Yeah. Uh, the, Very corny. The, because of the rating of this film, the action was able to be high impact and it was able to be gory and it was able to have some... It didn't cut away from all of the sort of... The, the impact behind the punches and the shooting mm. and... Mm. There's some real gory stuff in this film as well. It's real good. Um, anything else before we get into spoilers? I think that's... Do we have another segment? No, that's it. No? Okay, cool. Cool. Let's head into spoilers. Spoilers! Oh, what a cool, 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 cool sound effect, I guess. <laughs> All right, we're in spoiler section, uh, the place where we dissect and evolve Cinema everything Dick! about... Uh, you know what? I have a feeling film. I know what Brody's <laughs> cinema dick is. No, that was, that was a pleasant cinema experience. So uh, would you like to go into it, Brody? Going into the cinema uh, yesterday, ran into no other but Jordan's old parents. Uh, Jordan's nice. My old yeah, parents. No, uh, I mean, they Jordan's are Jordan's very but... nice, young, <laughs> hip parents. Jordan's <laughs> cool parents. That was a slip of the tongue. I, that was, it was like, you know, like, oh, Jesus. They don't listen to this. Uh, it's fine. Oh, they are yeah. also, they're also very old. <laughs> they're very nice. And they were very nice to me in the cinema. Oh, that's good. And I shook your dad's hand. Yep. It was nice. It was pleasant. I saw a hot. I said hi. A pleasant handshake. Yep. They didn't give me pleasant handshakes. They, they said <laughs> that I should do, we should do a uh, podcast on Mamma Mia. And I thought it was funny because we, we did a podcast on Mum and Dad. You know uh, what infuriates me further than that is I'm the one that told Mum and Dad to see Mamma Mia because I saw it and then I said, yeah, we're doing a podcast on it. You should take Mum to see it. Uh, She'd enjoy it. it. It was very funny and it was, an, it was a very nice experience. So just to clarify, not only do they not listen to the podcast, they don't actually just listen to me in real life. In general. Let alone on audio-based form. <laughs> yeah. They listen to me on no audio platform including <laughs> real life <laughs> that was fair uh, love um, it. So that was very nice but ooh, so that, yeah ooh. but then my Heading dad into the cinema ooh. got in the cinema sat down got to sit up the back it was nice I was far away from the exit signs that went blinding my eyes it was good and then throughout the film the only person doing anything annoying in the entire film was the person sitting to my right who Continuously lost something under the seat, so he had his <laughs> light on on his phone searching for something. He was like 15 minutes in. Oh, I've lost was something. Was this Jordan's but, dad? Better look on the seats. <laughs> no, they're, 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 they're longer. Yeah. The guy lost something five times through the film. <laughs> the only person doing anything annoying to the film is the one sitting next to me. Of course. What is yeah. it about me that attracts <laughs> all these dicks? <laughs> <laughs> Angus, do you, do you have a yeah. cinema dick? Do I have a cinema dick? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. Kendo, do you have a cinema only dick? Me. <laughs> I, I do have a cinema dick. Uh, it's not nearly as impressive as Brody's. Mine was just, there was a person in front of us, uh, specifically sitting in front of my girlfriend, um, the seat in front of us, and the trailers were going and she was flipping through her phone and here's the most annoying thing about um, people on their phones is for some reason they don't turn the brightness down. Hmm. I disagree with people being on their phones once the lights go out. I've had that. But turn the brightness on your phone. Let's do that. The brightness is way up. I could tell because it lit up the room. And she was sitting with one of her friends and they were like debating over whether or not to send a text message. Like this girl had like sort of for 10 minutes did you just of- reach over and press send that was, would have been amazing <laughs> I was so tempted to just Siri reach- send message yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was so tempted to just you know what my favourite thing to do now already is though now that you've said that is to walk into a, like an Apple store and go hey Siri and just listen to nine different yeah mine's just gone off then <laughs> just listen to like got him listen to like nine different phones just go uh, Jordan um, pranks himself yeah <laughs> um but I was so tempted to just like whack the phone. But anyway, so the lights went out, the movie started and her friend was still just like slowly reading the text and then they gave it back and then they had a whisper and then they altered something in the text. They, they like went and like altered this text for about 10 minutes at the beginning of the film before they sent it. And then, you know, when you send an anxious text and you take, check your phone every four seconds, they did that for the whole film. <laughs> like they just kept like she just kept flicking the phone up to be like oh he hasn't replied yet oh no I can't. Kate Nogs, what is uh, the most positive thing about this film for you most positive this film is yeah uh, most positive film <laughs> was either I'm afraid Jordan's just had a heart attack Brode man you're most positive um, part of the, the film the first time <laughs> that uh, the guys the spy's parents were named Tom and Martha was hilarious. Yep. And I was the only one in the cinema that picked it up. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. I was like, Tom and Martha, 
why is that funny? <laughs> I like, I, I know that, I know that. I'm like, and I was like, no, that's not, that's not Superman's parents. And then I was like, no. oh, it's Batman's parents. <laughs> Thomas Wayne and Martha, Martha Wayne. Wayne. Yep. Was, and then I went, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> And everyone else in the cinema was just like, what? what? That was like a one minute conversation in my head. So it would look like I was laughing at something else. What's great is this is yet another one of those circumstances where Brody's the only person that laughed at a joke in the cinema. Uh, That's be- it's really becoming, we need a song for it. It's my favorite segment at this point. I love it. It's things that only Brody finds funny. If I'm the only one that laughs, that means that it was really good. That was great. Did you notice that, Angus? I didn't notice that, no. Oh, well. Whoa. It's like you weren't smart yeah. yeah. I'm oh. getting some heat from k <laughs> really uh, like that. I have more, but I'll wait till you guys get Yeah. It. Okay. Um, Kate McKinnon. Is it McKinnon? Yes. yes. She was great. I thought her whole character was fantastic. I haven't seen Kate McKinnon in anything other than Ghostbusters, which I walked out of. Um, she was fantastic in this. Then last night, I went and watched another movie... Um, starring Scarlett Johansson that was about them having a great night out and had Kate McKinnon Scarlett Yo Hansen Yo <laughs> Yo Hansen Yo Hansen <laughs> Kate McKinnon played an Australian in the movie I watched last night and she was terrible in it so that's More like sort Kate of... McKinnon <laughs> <laughs> Oh no I've done something now I'll never everyone's last name for the rest of time John Kate McKinnon and this was fantastic I thought her character was mm. awesome hilarious also uh, I've already said it but the action in this film uh, blew me away in terms of what I had set as my expectation for action in these kinds of films Kate McKinnon's style of comedy is like a best friend style of comedy to you yeah exactly right? yeah. Yeah, where, it's, where yeah. it's like just like anytime she makes a joke I'm like this is so much like something I can imagine doing with a close friend just a relatable and it's like only of. funny to us because it's so weird yeah. and ridiculous and she, she just and you're just laughing at it and it's like and then and she just does it for like everyone and it's, that's why it's so good it's the type of humour that's like I will do something so outlandish and embarrassing just to embarrass you because you're the only person that knows everyone here mm. yeah. it's the sort of yeah. thing that I'd do to you Angus if we went to a party and I didn't know anyone there but then I'd do it back tenfold and you'd still get embarrassed. Yeah. So I, at the start, I thought um, Kate McKinnon was going to be a bit too much for this film. Um, but I think about halfway through it, I'm like, no, no, she, she's the best thing about this film. The film just hasn't caught up with it. That was my positive. Fair Onwards. <laughs> so wait, your, your positive was, you didn't think Kate McKinnon would be great, but she was. But she turned out to be the best thing about the film. But that's yeah. my positive. So what's yeah. your other positive? I don't have one then. Okay. Um, <laughs> super harsh gotta say I, d- I d- really hated this film really? I didn't it's, like it at crazy. all I thought, I, thought it I thought it was rubbish I thought it was fantastic I gotta I say uh, Mila Kunis um, she isn't like the funniest person in the world but she's still pretty she's still pretty funny and it worked off so that's having, the main actress yeah yeah yep, okay. it worked well having someone who was entirely funny and that's their thing they're funny mm. and mm. having Mila I really like them together as a relatable level headed like the main yeah. protagonist that you can follow and relate to yeah. yeah Angus what was your least favourite part my least favourite part okay so I see what you guys are saying about um, there were some shots in the action sequences which um, were filmed well the rest of the film was filmed very horribly though you can't just put good action shots in and expect a movie to succeed so, my my biggest problem that I had with this was a filmmaking problem, which was their continuity sucked balls. Um, so, I first noticed this in the first flashback that they had where Mila Kunis is talking to her boyfriend, whatever X, that guy's yeah. name is. Yeah. Um, so, it's a flashback and it's just, it's just them meeting and it's just a dialogue scene. So, it's a shot, reverse shot in a conversation and... The you can hear the guy talk like the shots on Miller. He's in like you can see the back of his head. He's obviously not talking, but he starts talking, and then it switches around. So like obviously it doesn't match up. Like that. That's so alone. They've done the audio or, or changed the audio after. It's, it's just obviously obvious that they've shot it multiple times because their heads are in different position and blah blah blah. Um, that I'm like, okay, fine. Like maybe that's just something I picked up in, but the next, next time I picked it up was absolutely horrible, which was when, uh, the Kate McKinnon Miller and the English bloke, um, were staying in a backpackers and Miller and the English bloke 
were brushing their teeth and having a conversation. Mm-hmm. And the continuity on that just was absolutely horrendous. So by like, continuity, you, you mean from scene to scene in which they cut No, it. no, from shot, shot to shot. shot. From, shot, so to from shot. shot to shot. So there'll be a shot of Miller talking and in the reverse shot of him talking, she would have already had her toothbrush in her mouth yeah. or... And it, or she'll be brushing her teeth I while he's talking, any of this, and then it but... flipped around, and her toothbrush was out of her mouth, and just little things like just, that. Yeah, there's another film like, like that that I learn wish how to... that has that, and it annoyed the shit out of me. Yeah, yeah. it just annoyed annoyed the crap out of me. It just I wanted them to Stuff that learn should, how to yeah learn how to walk up on. before they can run. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, continuity was fair rubbish, so which that's... kind of kind of yeah put a stale taste in my mouth from yep. from that. I did not like it. I thought you would have picked up on it as well. No. I don't, didn't pick up on it at all. It was... It. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that's my biggest negative. Okay. Also, um, I think the <clears throat> plot was very predictable. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'll agree with that. Birdman. Um, The... My least favorite part... So... I really didn't like any of the flashbacks in this. Because the very first flashback, it says a year earlier... And then she's, like, talking to her ex-boyfriend. But then there's no clear moment where it goes back to the present. Yeah, So, true. it's, like, one year earlier. And she's in the bar talking to her boyfriend. And then it's, like, her talking to Kate McKinnon and stuff. And I'm like, oh, wait, she's talking to Kate McKinnon. This is present day now. It was, like, it took me a while to, re- re- like, realize, oh, no, mm. this is present day again. Because the flashback was probably about 15 seconds Mm. Of like of her like bumping into her boyfriend, yeah, like her her now ex, and it was just it was just a weird thing where I was like, oh that was weird, and they did it like another two times during the film where they did a flashback, but then when it when it came back to modern day, it was like this it was like either like something similar about like the shots or like the character because it's pretty much the same characters, yeah. So so I was like, it took me like a- each time it took me seconds like, okay it's present day now, and there's no real change in <clears throat> Miller's appearance. Like, if Miller had no. a different haircut or, like, a yeah. mole or Maybe something, she got removed. And also... A mole. The- <laughs> just a mole on her just forehead. A- just a yeah. massive mole on her head. Just also, <laughs> something. the flashbacks were kind of kind of not needed at all. They were, like, just, they were just introduced at random points and I, there was, like... I like to think... Very unnecessary a, the story. A mole on her head in the flashback and when it cuts forward, they're like, God, also, can you remember that mole that I had? <laughs> yeah. My God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, was, that was right before I got rid of that mole that I had. <laughs> so so that was that was kind of really annoying for me. And I've got another one, but Jordan, what was what was your least? Um so I'm I'm gonna say bringing the um the dead ex boyfriend slash spy back at the end as a bad guy. Um I didn't mind the actor showing up and like bumping into her and being like, it's me, I'm alive. But what I would have preferred is this played on a lot of, for me, this successfully played on a lot of tropes that are in spy movies. It did a good job of playing on tropes and having realistic characters be like, this is becoming a bit ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like a flash drive, really? That's the classic. Like, and it was playing on tropes so much that I really would have liked for when he was there at the end being like it's me I didn't die baby I love you everything's fine for the British guy to be like no he has a twin brother and his twin brother works for the evil company and she'd be like I thought he was going to be a mask yeah like, or something just like, after Mission Impossible I pre- happened yeah, some, I thought I w- he was going to like face up something like that I would have preferred it to be just another just playing on like one of those ridiculous tropes of a spy film hmm. and for him to be like it's, a, it's an evil twin or something like that and for her to be like really evil twin of course, it's an evil twin. But when he was just like, no, it's me, I'm alive. I'm like, okay, why did you play dead at the beginning? And then it was a, none yeah, of this made that sense. That was a very none ter- of it, terrible None of it made yeah. sense after that bit because it means like the bad guys killed the bad guy. Like, that As if you the didn't see that, that coming, The though. person that faked his I death. I saw him being the team. bad guy. Like, right I saw him being the bad guy. I just didn't want him in on it. Like, I saw him being the bad guy. Not from the start, but once the British guy sort of... I believe the British guy and the British guy was like, no, he was kind of a bad guy doing this. But then when we saw him, I was like, I don't want it to be him. I want it to be an outlandish trope that was being mm-hmm. played on. For it that, to either be a twin or a mask or something ridiculous like that. That works That works in... in uh, oh, jeez. I can't speak. That uh, works with my second uh, least favorite. Yep. Which is the climax of the film at that party. Mm. Where... We've had 
interesting action and we've had really good comedy. I think I know where you're going. And the climax is just this weird thing where the ex-boyfriend shows up out of nowhere and it makes no sense mm. and is very and unnecessary that weird, to the that story. that weird trapeze thing? The, the tra- trapeze thing was a bit odd. I thought here's the trapeze the, thing was I, fun. I liked I like it, that. but it was a bit weird. Here's, here's the thing that I thought was the because dumbest it was, bit about... It was leading nowhere with the entire climax. It, the, that trapeze thing didn't lead anywhere. I really liked that as a set. There's like a scene as a set piece. Mm. I thought it, I really liked that. But then there was just this weird moment where her boyfriend shows up and then she starts like believing him but then it's like she's probably playing him because she's actually doing pretty well at this spy stuff at the moment but then like and then her like new kind of interest shows up and the film has ended it it ended yesterday I've gone 24 hours plus yeah. I'm seeing it and I'm still unsure who the good guys and the bad guys were in the film <laughs> yeah. because they were all working for the same government well, also, all the bad people... They're all Hydra, but were, they're all S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, or something like so, that. Yeah, so, like, the, the film ended 24 hours ago, and I still <laughs> am unsure Here's- who the good guys and who the bad guys were. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because they, at all, at some point, every single person played both a good person and, and a, a bad, bad person. person yeah. So there's a scene at the end of this where um, Kate McKinnon and, like, one of the evil assassins, they're both on either side of a trapeze platform, and they both have... One of the triple, one of the trapeze. A triplees. A triplees. A trapeze. A trapeze. Triplees. Like don't little, let me fall. The, the bar, like they're both standing there ready, and the idea is that they're going to swing at each other and fight in the air, type deal. And Kate McKinnon really doesn't want to do it. Here's what you do: you just don't swing. You just <laughs> pretend you're going to swing, and then then the bad chick just swings out into the middle, and then she just has to hang there and drop. That's just that's what you do. I just thought like you don't have to swing, just. Just stay there. Have you ever been on a trapeze? No. It's good fun. I know that you had, because you did clown school, right? Yeah. So you're a failed clown. Circus. Um, Circus school. Yeah. Not clown school. Yeah. Don't Jordan. (laughs) (laughs) Clown school, circus school. (laughs) There's a difference, mate. (laughs) Jeez. Get it right. If you're going to be on this podcast, Jordan, the most important thing about this podcast (laughs) is that all our facts are 100% correct, okay? So if you're going to be on this podcast and you're going to be a member of this podcast and you're going to be a co-host of this podcast, then what you've got to do is you've got to come here and you've got to get your facts right, all right? So if you're not going to get your facts right, then you can can take a walk, Jordan. You can can, like get your head straight. You can come back. You can try to get your facts right. But if you don't get them right, (laughs) then you're off this podcast. Well... Brody, it's funny you mentioned about whether I should be a part of this podcast or not, because I currently run a Facebook page now. <laughs> oh, amazing segue. <laughs> what an incredible segue I've done right there. Segways are fun. Oh, well, I'll Have you been on a segue? No. I have. I went to Segway school. <laughs> John, <laughs> I, 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 I remember when you went to, segway, I remember when you went to commute school. <laughs> John, if you're going to bring up Segways on this podcast, what you're going to do is you're going to realise that Angus has been on a Segway, so he's going to have more experience talking about Segways than you. Or I, right? Okay. So maybe you should take a walk, you should get your head straight, you should come back and get all of your Segway uh, moments, your Segway puns, your Segway jokes, your little tidbits about Segways, get them all correct. I think it was just I didn't pay. Uh, I'd like as the story was wasn't very good. There was like some scenes, like you said, Angus, where like continuity wasn't in there. Hmm. But I I've got I don't know why, but I just wasn't paying that much attention. Maybe it was because of the dickhead sitting next to me flashing his light all over my face. Yeah, could have been that. It could have been that. But um, I feel this film was better than I expected yeah, it to be. It was. I, I had no expectations. I went in. It was. It was. It was pretty funny. I liked the jokes. I liked the people in it. And uh, I liked the the action from most of it, yeah. and so it was just kind of a pleasant surprise, and it was just a, a nice experience. I reckon you've you've hit the money on the nail, because I you, ha- you have hit the money you, on the nail. <laughs> you've you've hit the money on the nail because Jordan, I that was, that was good. <laughs> a- Angus is fine with his little tidbits, right? <laughs> Brody, you if Angus cuts yours. out the other yeah. condescending part, then this condescending <laughs> part doesn't make sense. It's uh, not attached to anything. It w- <laughs> I think if you don't pay attention to this movie, you'll enjoy bits of it. Uh, oh K-Dogs, do you have anything uh, to close this? Oh, I didn't even think of it. No, nope. I got nothing. Right, guys, so I've got an idea. So uh, your ex is actually a spy and you found out the whole world is after this USB. Where do you hide it? Uh, uh, dig a hole in the backyard. Put in it. Angus's vagina. Well, can't use that one. (laughs) (laughs) 
thank you for listening to the Film Slice podcast. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did enjoy that, you can find more I podcasts didn't. on... Um, I hated it. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Look, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I mean, not you, but that's okay. Thank uh, you. That's... You, can, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter. Uh, you can now find us on Facebook. Uh, pretty much all of those things are under the iTunes as well. iTunes as well. All of those things are pretty much under the name Film Slice Pod or Film Slice Podcast. Um, send us a message. Give us your input. Tell us if you'd like us to change or replace any of the members on this podcast. Thanks, everybody. Free the pickle. <laughs>